With military precision, a crew of vibrosonic trucks moves through a remote forest in British Columbia. You may not believe it, but these trucks are helping to look through the Earth's crust to a whopping depth of around 30 kilometers. What are they looking for, and how do they reveal what is deep beneath our feet? Well, essentially, uh, what we're trying to do here is uh, look at the distribution of some Cretaceous rocks, sedimentary rocks in the subsurface. These rocks are about 100 to 125 million years old, and they're believed to be the most prospective rocks for oil and gas in this area. And we're trying to understand how deep these rocks extend and um, how far they extend away from where they've been mapped at the surface by geologists working over the last few years. Geophysicists like Andy are able to peer deep into the Earth's crust using a process called reflection seismology. The trucks shoot sound waves deep into the ground, which bounce back to produce a CAT scan of the Earth's strata. But there's a lot of work that goes into preparing for this survey, and that's where these people come in. Seismic survey companies hire linemen, men and women whose job is to lay down the ears that pick up the reflected sound waves. They are cylindrical sensors spread along a cable that transmits data to a collection vehicle. With the amount of effort we're putting in, in some cases that sound is going to go down to about 30 kilometers, and that's the base of the Earth's crust. And if we can see reflections from those depths, then that's telling us that we are actually doing a good job about putting sound energy into the Earth. So that's kind of a quality control check for us during the survey. But the other important thing that we hope to get out of this survey is a un better understanding of how to acquire data in this region. One of the reasons that there hasn't been any work here for the last 25 years has been that it's been very difficult to get good seismic data. The reason for that is the volcanic rocks that cover the surface. So if we can actually find ways to improve the seismic acquisition, that could be a significant contribution to encouraging future seismic work and oil industry interest in this area. Today's technology has become more mobile and advanced than a quarter century ago. This collection truck is the heart of the whole operation. The lines laid out earlier by linemen connect here. Then the sound waves detected by evenly spaced sensors send the information to these two supercomputers. It's all quarterbacked by a technician who then prints out a paper record of each sound blast. But it's here at Simon Fraser University in Burnaby, BC, that sound becomes images that can be understood. Here we have a shot from the Seismic Reflection Survey. Across the top, we have distance with time down the side. In the center, we have the location of the vibe trucks. This is the source of our seismic energy. And a distance. Nathan Hayward is an expert in geology, Geophone. geophysics, and tectonics. Geophone. In other words, he understands the forces and movements that create the deep structures of the Earth's crust. And he's the one who interprets the sound image data from the field survey. We have um, a number of seismic lines in the basin. And it's a bit like when you do um, imaging of somebody's head um, for medical reasons. And instead of having lots and lots and lots of slices through the, through the head, we only have a few slices. And we're trying to understand, well, what does the whole head look like? So what does the geology in three dimensions look like? But we only have a few slices 
of information from which to predict. Geoscience BC's seismic survey in the Nachaco Basin is also a look back in time. Around 200 million years ago, the world was much different. It was one giant continent. Then tectonic energy started moving pieces of the Earth's crust around. Incredible forces were being exerted and helped form its present day structure. Hayward's task is to reveal what the rock layers may contain. What we're looking for is we're looking for areas where we have substantial thicknesses of certain types of rocks that could be a host to hydrocarbons. Um, we're also looking for younger rocks, intrusive rocks, that may be associated with mineralization. Also, we can look at when each of these receivers first heard this sound energy. And we can pick the time that it took for the energy to travel from our source to our receiver. And that's shown by this red line here. The slope of this line is related to the speed of sound through the rocks. The flatter the slope, the faster the rocks. And what it's showing is that the speed of the rocks increases with depth. We can use hundreds of shots, just like this, a longer profile, to give us an idea of velocity or speed of sound through the rocks in the top about 200 meters, a longer profile. That can give us an indication of what rocks might be there and what structures might be there, and which is often obscured by trees, forest, um, glacial deposits. And so that's the key thing, is putting this information out to the geoscience community as well as the public community as well, in different forms, obviously, um, so that it can move the understanding forward as a group effort, as a team effort. We use the seismic reflection images to interpret the geology of the subsurface. This is one of the images from the Nishako Basin. To help us interpret these images, we use all of the geological information that we have from the area. We'll use the surface geology that's been mapped by geologists, and we'll also use the geology and information from the wells that have been drilled in the past. Those will, those will give us information about the type of rock and also the age of the rock. We'll then look at the seismic reflection data, and we're looking for patterns, and we're looking for changes as we move along a line below the ground. And that can tell us about what rocks are there, what rocks are below the ground, where we have faults and structures, and where we have different types of rocks. Once we've interpreted all of the lines, and there are many lines to this Nacheco Basin, we can build a map of the structures and geology of the area across the region. And it's exciting when you put all these pieces of the jigsaw puzzle together with your experience and your ideas of how geological systems work and you can match these models and these ideas to what you're observing and then you know that you're getting a better understanding of that area. Through these kinds of surveys, Geoscience BC is always looking for ways to create local benefits too. In the Nachaco survey, several members of the Nazco First Nation were hired as linemen and the town of Quinell enjoyed a boost of more than $400,000 to its local economy. There's also a secondary benefit for First Nations from these kind of survey activities. Well, what we hope is to provide First Nations uh, in this area with a general understanding of the issues related to hydrocarbon exploration and, you know, the potential prospectivity of the rocks in their traditional territories and although the data will be made generally available we hope that First Nations will use this information in understanding better the resource potential of the areas that they inhabit and that can assist them in discussions with government over a whole range of issues.